This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at the fight capital of the world, MGM Grand, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's Cinco de Mayo week as well. Uh, yeah, it doesn't get better than this, uh, Canelo Bivol. Absolutely. I mean, he's up there now, the media, the people. It's a Tuesday, Umar. You know, it's, it's incredible. This guy is just the biggest star in the sport of boxing. I'll tell you, a tough fight this weekend. We just did the head-to-head -head up there. This is a really, really tough, dangerous fight against Dimitri Bivol. You saw a thriller last Saturday. You're going to see another thriller this Saturday as well on zone. Do you believe Dimitri Bivol was the best light heavyweight in the world? I think, I think him against uh, Betabiev is an incredible fight. You know, the thing is with Betabiev is he's old, right? He's also a huge puncher. You saw him go down against Callum Johnson. Dimitri Bivol is fresh. Never really had a tough fight. Never been down on the canvas. <laughs> Never been down on the canvas. Never um, been close to defeat. Box Joe Smith, beat him easily. He's another world champion. Box John Pascal a few years ago when he was in his prime, really. Um, or back end of his prime, easy fight. So it's all about how good Dimitri Bivo is because if you're not a pound for pound great, you're not going to beat Canelo Alvarez. So um, we'll see, but I'd, I do believe you'll get a thrilling fight. And again, he steps up. You see the size of, of these light heavyweights up against him. You know, he's not a light heavyweight. He's taking these incredible challenges, uh, but he loves to do it. What did you think about Dimitri's performance against Craig Richards last time out? Uh, I thought it was a, a bit of a Weird fight, it's tough behind closed doors, you know, when there's no crowd there. And, you know, he won the fight pretty comfortably, but I don't, I think he took his foot off the, the gas and C Craig came good late on and put in a good performance. And, you know, Dimitri won the fight, why, what, three, four rounds on most cards? Solid, not spectacular, but he's been treading water for a long time. Like before that against Castillo, he's been waiting for this big opportunity. He wanted the better BF unification but he wants to show how good he is in these kind of fights. And you know, like I said, a young, fresh, light heavyweight that could be levels above what he had to show against everybody else that he's beaten comfortably. Now, from a business point of view, this is a new start for you. Your first uh, show in the US on terms of pay-per-view, uh, the zone pay-per-view launches this Saturday night. What kind of buyers are we expecting, Eddie, for Canelo Bivol? Um, I think uh, the zone have got the, their targets. For us, it's about promoting the show. You know, we will make the event as big as possible. We already know the numbers that he does on the zone. We already know the amount of subscribers that exist on the zone in the US. Um, and it's going to be incredibly successful because he always is. He's a, he's a, he's a pay-per-view smash every time he fights. And this, of course, is on platform on the zone, on pay-per-view in the US and across many other platforms as well on pay-per-view um, via, via the zone, obviously. Um, and expect some big numbers, as always. You know, you saw huge numbers against Caleb Plant. We saw huge numbers against Billy Joe Saunders. We saw huge numbers every time he fights. And, you know, it's a, it's a new start and a, an infrequent start. Um, the one-off starts for DAZN when they have to utilise this model for someone like Canelo Alvarez, who has become just a pound-for-pound -pound superstar and making money like it's going out of fashion. And this is the model to, to bring him to your platform. Just to clarify, in the UK, it's on your normal DAZN subscription. Yeah, uh, you don't have to pay in the UK. Um, what kind of fight are you expecting then? What are you expecting? Do you believe Canelo can stop Dimitri Bivol on Saturday night? That he needs to get in. He needs to bring the fight to Canelo. If he boxes like he did against Kovalev, it's going to be a very tough night for Canelo Alvarez because he took his time. He let Kovalev use his size, but Kovalev, he wasn't faded, but he was at the back end of his career when he fought him. Dimitri Bivol isn't, so he's going to use his feet very well. He's going to be in and out with his, you know, European style. Canelo's got to cut the ring off, do what he, you know, do what he does do what he does very well, which is walk him down, slip and slide, get on, get on the inside and hurt him, but do it early. I don't think he's going to be, and Eddie Reynoso is not going to be wanting to get through five, six, seven rounds with Dimitri Bivol getting into his, his flow. But Dimitri's going to be hit like he's never been hit before. And also he's going to experience something he's never experienced before, which is 20,000 people inside the T-Mobile going absolutely crazy for their hero. I expect a great fight. I think it'll unravel quite quickly. Might be cagey for two or three rounds, but I think Canelo's going to want to get up close and put the hurt on him. Is it sold out yet, the team over? Like a few hundred tickets left, the expensive ones, so they'll all go this week. What's the difference between the UK sales and US sales in terms of, we know in terms of US fights, a lot of the tickets go on fight week. Yeah. The fans buy them very late. Last week, we sold probably nearly 4,000 tickets for Taylor Serrano on fight week. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do a thousand tickets on fight week in the UK. Everybody buys early. So here we did 95% we did of the tickets in the first week. 
and now the remaining tickets is just the expensive kind of mid-range tickets that obviously ringside all goes the cheaper tickets go and they go this week as well so very different in terms of walk up but there's no walk up available here really because you're down to i don't know five six hundred tickets whatever's left of the of the sort of fairly expensive ones and like i said in, in new york last week we sold i think it's like 13 or 1400 tickets on fight day for taylor serrano so different kind of mindset over here but for canelo obviously a lot of people are flying in and, and here to to watch him on Cinco de Mayo weekend now, really, unfortunately, some sad news about Philip Hergovic, yeah, which meant he can't fight this Saturday. So what's the situation with Philip Hergovic moving forward, Eddie? So that fight will be rescheduled with Zhang, and we will announce a new opponent for Zhang in due course. You know, we know that Philip, unfortunately, lost his father, who he was very close to, and over the last sort of week since that happened, he just hasn't been able to train or get his mind ready to fight. And we, our thoughts go out to him and the family, and, and we'll announce the Zhang uh, replacement shortly. So what's the chief support for this Saturday night? It, the same as it always was. Montana Love against... I thought uh, Hergovic saying was. Hergovic was starting the broadcast. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he'll be replaced, that opponent. And yeah, Montana Love. And then Gearsoff against Gomez as well. Uh, Velasquez, Espino, Castro, etc. And we'll announce uh, Zhang's opponent shortly. UK viewers might not be too familiar with Montana Love. I know you're very hyped yeah. about him. Why? Because I watched him on the Jake Paul card. He was unbelievable. He smashed Berencic to pieces. He came out last time with a great performance on the Devin Haney card. Now he's got Valenzuela, who beat Robbie Davis, has had a couple of good wins. It's a big fight for him. And I'll tell you, Montana Love could, could well be the next star of American boxing. Great fighter. And Gearsoff against Gomez Duran is also an absolute war. You know, two Mexicans on really the B side of those fights, but that bring it every time. What's the situation with Mr. Steven Espinosa? More beef going on? Yeah, I just told the story. And, you know, I know that he said that uh, he can't recall it when I tried to shake his hand at the last game. But he looked me straight in the eye and, and swerved me. So, uh, it's all right. You know, you just remember these things, that's all. No problem. Wait, well, I didn't catch that, Eddie. What were you saying? The story was about where, yeah, and he said he doesn't recall it. He, but when I put my hand out, he looked me straight in the eye and then walked off. So he remembers it, but it's all right. So do I. Uh, Eddie, you announced June 4th, Agawa v Cordina in Cardiff. Yes. Talk to me about that show. Massive fight. I want to thank The Zone for this because it's so difficult to bring an established world champion like Agawa, who could basically walk straight into an undisputed fight. It was a big unification fight with Shakur Stevenson. We came up with the money to give Joe Cordina the opportunity in Cardiff. June 4th, going to be a really big show. If Joe Caldina can go out and become world champion against Agawa, it opens the door for him for unifications against Shakur Stevenson and massive fights in that division. So June the 4th, in Cardiff, Joe Caldina gets his shot at the world title. Just quickly run through some more things. It's very loud in the MGM Grand at the moment. Dan Raphael put a report saying that Joshua's next fight with Usyk will be on Sky Sports box office. Can you make any comment on that, please, Eddie? Not confirmed yet. Obviously, there's a lot of negotiations going on. Sky are in a good position for that fight. There's talks with others. It also depends on the deal we do with the site in terms of the rights. So nothing confirmed yet on the fight or the broadcaster, but we'll announce in due course. Talking about reports as well, only reports, but Ben Whitaker is rumoured to sign with Sky Sports. I know you were close to getting him, so what happened with Ben Whitaker? The, I mean, the, the offers coming in were crazy and probably double what we were paying. So he took the money and uh, good luck to him. Last one, what's going on with Jake Paul in terms of the bet? What's happening with that? We're talking, we're talking, we're going to do something. I want to do something towards, um, I want to get some kind of women's girls foundation going to try and grow the sport. The viewership for the show on Saturday was huge. It'll be announced in due course. It was such a huge success. We've got to work off the back of that. So he can keep his million, but we want to do something. Has your view of Jake Paul changed after doing a show with him? No, because I've always liked him. I've always thought he was very smart. He proved that he was a great person to work with. Um, and at the same time, um, I've always known that he was a bit of a plonker. Same, same for me. I'm a bit of a blonker, but you know, I think um, I really enjoyed working with him, and you know, I, he is good for the sport in many different ways. Press conference no, Thursday, no, weigh in no, Friday, no, fight no. night Saturday. Roll it on. Thank you. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness. Hey. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.